Uh, so today's roundtable is basically going to be a couple of different things. Um, one is the ILA Marketing Forum. We want to kind of know what people want to know about artificial intelligence, how we can help to uh, find a presenter or somebody who's a little bit more knowledgeable about artificial intelligence than we all are, uh, to basically talk to us and answer whatever specific questions we have, um, whether it's just what is artificial intelligence? How is it being used in a marketing com component? Um, if it's as broad as that, or if it's as specific as how can it help me write a campaign? How can it help me uh, develop images? How can it help me source different things? Uh, whatever the case may be, we're kind of using today as a little bit of a show and tell if anybody has had experience with artificial intelligence, if anybody has strong opinions one way or the other. Um, but really, if somebody has questions uh, or wants to learn more, we're looking at trying to source uh, a presenter or something for a uh, hybrid roundtable lecture kind of uh, presentation in July. So we're using the next couple of months to really find the right person if we can. Uh, no promises being made. It seems to be a little bit difficult to find presenters, especially on something that's as emerging as this. But we'll certainly do our best. Uh, with all of the resources that we have around the state uh, to see what we can do. So with that, um, I will kind of kick things off a little bit with two tiny examples of artificial intelligence that I've used in my time here, or been exposed to in my time here. Uh, so when I, I, I'm new to my position, I've been the director of the Wooddale Public Library for about six weeks now. And one of the things that we need to do over here is a rebranding exercise. Um, and so I used uh, an artificial intelligence imaging thing, imaging website uh, to see if they could create a logo for me. If I gave them semi-specific uh, parameters to, to do that. Uh, we have an owl in our logo right now. It predates uh, my date of birth, I think by about 10 years. Uh, it is, it was a, owl that somebody drew in a competition and, and they want to keep some sort of an owl component. And so I said, cool, artificial intelligence thing, design me a logo for a public library that includes an owl. And it took me through some steps like I normally, like I would have expected. Uh, do you like this style? Do you like this font? Pick some owls that you might like. Uh, and then it kind of smushed all those together and produced a couple of different options for me none of which were super applicable because they kind of look like the Duolingo owl. They kind of look like the Chicago Public Library owl. Uh, they kind of looked like already existing uh, owls in the world. And of course, there's only so many ways you can draw an owl before it just doesn't become an owl anymore. But um, that was my limited experience with that from a marketing component here. Additionally, my head of uh, information services or information uh, technology provided an example of an essay that her grandson used ChatGPT to write for a class at school. Um, and although it, the essay itself was very uh, rigid and robotic, you know, it was very formal. This is my introductory paragraph. This is my thesis statement. It's all those things that we kind of learn in school about how to write a proper essay with five paragraphs and whatever. Uh, but it was a really good basis for an essay. I have to admit, like it was really convincing. It didn't, if somebody didn't tell me it was from ChatGPT, I don't know that I would have known it was artificial intelligence, but it did sound very formal. So that was my really only kind of takeaway from that. But uh, basically, those are the kind of examples that we're looking for. Um, if anybody has used artificial intelligence or has uh, those strong opinions, like I mentioned before, please feel free to share them. Uh, but really, this is just an information gathering kind of a session for us to be able to find that right speaker for a July presentation. So I will pass it over to anybody who wants to unmute or add something in the chat. Uh, feel free to do that now. Or if you want to raise your hand, I can call on you too. We can go that way as well. This is Andrea of Palatine. Um, I, I don't really have a whole lot of experience with it. I've used something called, um, I think it's called Word Tune. And I've dabbled in just like when I'm writing some email. I think I also used it in a little bit of communications um, for writing, just like, you know, if I didn't like the way the sentence structure was, I threw it in there. And, you know, like you said, it gives you options. You can 
you can tell it whether, whether you want it to be more casual or formal. And I did like it and it did, you know, it did make my work easier, but honestly, I, I'd struggle with making it a habit probably because you know, and I know we're all busy in libraries, but I don't have like a get this written in an hour deadline, you know, <laughs> unless there was some right, kind right. of crisis, crisis or something. Then then I bet I would, hopefully I would think about using it um, if I had to really do something really quick. But um, I know that there's a ton of different websites you can use. And I, I don't feel like I want to pay for it either. I want to just use maybe some free options. So that's pretty much the extent of what I I've been doing and I I do want my staff to try and use it more because I feel like we should be <laughs> trying to get it more into our workflow because we do, we do need to stay up on technology and you know everyone's good everyone in the world like that's really a hyperbolic statement but if everyone's going to be using it um then our writing could start looking kind of stale I, so I know it's good I know that there's people who are worried about it so that's, that's all I have to say about it, I guess. No, oh, thank you for that. That's a good perspective. Um, before we get to you, Mandy, from Lake Forest, uh, Amber from Skokie put in the chat uh, that she hasn't used it yet, but saw that Hootsuite is offering to make social media copy um, using artificial intelligence. Has anybody tried that out with uh, Hootsuite's capabilities? I think we're using library aware over here for our e-newsletters and I can't imagine that they'll be doing anything with artificial intelligence anytime soon. I could be wrong, but I, I don't know. It doesn't sound like anybody's used it yet. So you may be a good person to use it and then report back on what you find. I'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, Mandy, if you wanna go ahead and um, share whatever you'd like to share. Yeah, so kind of playing off what Andrea was just talking about, I was thinking about, have I used it? I don't really know. And I actually use Grammarly quite a bit. And interestingly enough, it's not a full AI, but it is an artificial technology assistant. And I tend to use it because in my pairing of two here at work, my coworker is the stronger uh, content messaging creator than I am. I'm the graphic designer. I certainly do a lot more than that. But Sometimes I'm called on and I do need to uh, write some things up and where I kind of struggle more on like structure or how to present something, I kind of rely on that sometimes in my typing to kind of help my language skills because I know it's not my strength. Um, I think it's interesting. I think I just from a, a personal opinion, I have a weird aversion to it because um, I also am an artist. And so there's some questionable things there. I did uh, enjoy the article that was shared and there's a lot in there that kind of leans on where my thinking is. But in that same tone, you know, it's interesting to think about anytime we have something new, there's always gonna be the goods and the bads, right? Um, I just talked to my mom who's a mechanical engineer and she's like, I need to learn about AI. So it's very topical and I appreciate you guys kind of bringing it up. And I recently saw, I follow some photography stuff and this person did an AI photography piece and he won. And then when he won, he bowed out, but he was making a point of that people didn't know that that was you know, done by an AI format. And at the same time though, that's, you know, a lot of people criticized that kind of work. Um, you know, Do we need to think about, it's not that it's wrong, but it's its own category. And how do we put it in that place is kind of where my mind has been thinking lately. It's struggle for me because I'm very much, I want to create, you know, my own things, but I also use other things that are licensed. And so it's like this weird balance you have to find with yourself. So I guess that's my comment. <laughs> sure. No, that's, that makes sense. Um, would you mind for those of us in the room who maybe aren't as familiar with Grammarly though, would you just mind giving a little bit of an overview as to what that is? Yeah, so I use it as the free service. You can buy a premium version and upgrade. Our speakers are at twenty six percent. And sorry, I hear some feedback back there. Um, if you're not speaking, could you please mute yourself, please? And thank you. 
Yeah. So I started, uh, I had heard about it. I saw commercials and everywhere for it. I'm like, I'm just going to see. And, and basically it's a way I attach it into my emails. It comes up as I type, it gives me suggestions to change a word. It, it corrects kind of like an autocorrect would, but it can also do it for some sentence sentence structure. Um, so it's not totally rewriting, but it helps you out a little bit. And so I've attached it in my outlook and my team's chats um, it doesn't attach into my uh, design programs. It does attach into my Canva account. So okay. once I had it set up in the places that you type a lot, um, I can get it to connect to. And so the free service is enough for me to kind of help me out. But if you're looking for more, I would say sentence structure um, or change of sentence that may be paying for it. I just don't know what that cost looks like um, or whether libraries could get a deal on it. And I would also say I enjoy their fun recap newsletters to me weekly that tell me how my how I sounded this week sometimes I'm formal sometimes I'm confident sometimes I'm you know thoughtful <laughs> it's really like kind of funny and they tell you you know how many words you've used or you're using 75 percent more big words than others you know, it's kind of silly but um it does it has helped me think about my structure there so interesting um and to another point that you made as well uh, the news show 60 Minutes on CBS on Sunday nights, I think, um, they made the news because they were the first news organization to put a disclaimer at the beginning or end of their television program that said all of the content was generated by actual humans, none of it was generated by artificial intelligence. So I would imagine that disclaimers like that will either become more of a normal type thing, um, especially in the journalism uh, realm, but it could be hugely in like the research and academic world as well, um, of course, too. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything in the chat here. Strong feelings of, about not using artificial intelligence for generating artwork. Yep. Okay. Who else would like to share any sort of experience with artificial intelligence? Doesn't have to be good. Go for it, Kelly. Um, okay, so I, before I started this job, I was a working artist. I've been published. I, you know, spent many years as an artist, but I actually don't mind using it um, a little bit here and there. And um, uh, I was using Midjourney for a couple of things, and I, I definitely have concerns about when artwork is ripping off other artists and I think that is something to be concerned about but I think there there can be a time and a place um to use it a little bit here and there and so like I used it recently we had this um literature and libations event and the artwork I had in my head was just not something I was capable of making in a timely fashion and it was something that incorporated books and wine, and it's not something that there's stock images out there for. Um, and I'll throw it in the chat what I ended up using. But um, in that kind of instance, it was it was very helpful. Um, I wouldn't use it on a regular basis. But um, I've also been using ChatGPT for things, which I've actually found incredibly helpful. Um, everything personally from generating a packing list for an upcoming vacation during a certain to a certain country during a certain time period uh, with the weather and it would generate that um, to uh, for my assistant coming up with a list of um, tasks for him um, also for this literature and libations event we were all giving book talks and the books we were doing were paired with wines and I'm not a big wine drinker. Um, so it was, I was finding it very challenging to figure out what to say about the books that I knew well, but how to pair them with the wine. So I actually went into chat GPT and I asked them to give me a paragraph explaining why, and I gave it the, spe the specific book and the specific brand uh, and type of wine that I was using. And it was able to formulate a paragraph that I didn't, use word for word, but it was able to give me a sense of where to start. And I was able to pull sort of bullet points for the talk um, that made it much easier for me. So um, for things like that, I think it it can be helpful. I mean, I do, I'm 
also a former teacher. So I understand the concerns that it is, you know, teachers might have with it being used to, you know, plagiarize things, but um, used responsibly, I think it can be very good. That's an interesting perspective. I think, um, and this is kind of where it gets a little bit gray for me is where do we balance this is making my job easier to with like, this is taking advantage of artists and creators and, and writers and all of that kind of stuff. I think using it as the prompts kind of as you indicated you were using it for, for more than I ever would have even begin to have thought to use it. Mm -hmm. A packing list of assignments for folks to do stuff. Um, and then of course the, uh, the the way that you were able to use it for literature and libations like that's weird that's, that's yeah. like a good weird a good weird yeah I was gonna drop the, I can't apparently I can't drop the image in the chat so um but it was cool oh I might be able to link to a um old social media post or something so just so people can see what it looked like but yeah but um as as Kari pointed out that time and place just like a calculator absolutely yep uh Zoe Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, I've been pretty avoidant of using AI things. I come from the academic library world uh, past couple of years, uh, and I'm newer to public library world. But I've been pretty avoidant of it. Um, from my experience in doing research, there's a lot of biases that can come in with, you know, all of this AI stuff. It's all man made. It's all code written by man. And I just feel like there's a lot of problems that can come with it, kind of like what Kelly is saying, to use it responsibly because things are being pulled from all over the internet. So like with artwork, it's going to be pulled from other artists that have uploaded online. With writing things, it's going to you know be pulled from copy from all over. So you could be, it could be copyright infringement issues. You know, I do think having some sort of like critical eye to it looking at like okay can I do my due diligence from using it of has this been done somewhere else things like that I can see how it can be really helpful but I've just been pretty avoidant <laughs> in general <laughs> no that 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 totally makes sense and uh if if any part of the industry uh were to be skeptical or avoidant of it I would hope it would be the academia world uh, that is, that could be a, a ton of red flags. And, and you raise a really good point too, is that all of this is, is human made, the programming side of it, the examples, all of that kind of stuff. And so of course, implicit biases and um, not even implicit biases, just general flat out biases are going to be included in these algorithms. I think um, there were some pretty flagrant ones that came out in a research, uh, you know, giving it a different topic based on somebody's skin color or whatever the case may be has generated different results and they're they're polarizing and they're jarring that a, a artificial intelligence is coming up with those types of biases and as uh our colleague down in orland park pointed out uh using chat gpt in some emails will get you flagged as spam as uh those sort of what i would assume is artificial intelligence is detecting artificial intelligence which is saying nope uh, we'll throw you in a spam filter. So that's a good thing to think of too. Uh, let's see. And then Kelly dropped in the artwork from Literature and Libations. So Kelly, could you, was that entire image AI generated? The image itself, yeah. I mean, I put in all the text and everything, but the that artwork, um, was and I I very specific I mean I went through dozens and dozens and dozens of iterations of various different things because I wasn't quite sure what I was looking for at the time and I started originally started out with prompts where I was looking for something more like a 60s style movie poster and then sort of then got into like silkscreen art you know, then I got into this sort of paper quilling and that's sort of what I settled on. And I went through multiple variations and, you know, sometimes they don't come out and they look really bizarre, um, but there were a handful that I really liked. And this was the one that, that I ended up using. I feel like it sounds like you could also just use it to just generate ideas, you know. Oh yeah. The, pla the plagiarism thing is definitely, you know, for sure, we should be careful about that. But it reminds me of oftentimes, I'm kind of stuck with the even how to start something and I might Google and look and then 
you know, kind of follow someone's outline or there's, you know, I'll write my own stuff, but I could see using chat GBT to like, just at least help me get going instead of using it word for word so that it would, you know, so that it wouldn't get caught in somebody's spam filter or something like that. Right, well, you can go into chat GBT and one thing you can do is you can say, generate a list of social media um, prompts or, you know, topics for a public library. And it will give you a long list and not that you have to use them word for word, not that you have to use them at all, but it it sometimes helps spark ideas. And sometimes they're sort of funky or they can be repetitive. Um, but, you know, I think that it, it does help when you're feeling stuck. I mean, I would never condone somebody just having it spit something out and then using that word for word, especially with the public. But, but I think it is good for sort of prompting you and, and generating those ideas when you're feeling blocked or stuck. Yep, and as noted in the chat, permission is, is a really big important um, aspect of it. Um, Kelly, I don't mean to keep putting you on the spot, but I'm kind of curious as to the tasks that it came up with for the marketing assistant. Um, uh, let me see, hold on, let me pull them up. Because I think, and as you're pulling them up, the, the reason I'm asking is because even if we don't manage people out there, we're certainly managing ourselves. And those of us who may be new to the roles or anything like that, um, often are kind of thrown into these situations of, I feel like I should be doing something, but I don't know where the hell to begin. Um, and so if, if chat GPT or a service like that can kind of give a little bit of a guidance or like you said, spark ideas for a starting place. Um, I'm yeah, I think it, genuinely curious as to what it came up with. I think it would actually even be good if you needed help writing a job description, um, you know, just for like certain things. Okay. So some weekly tasks. I mean, and these are things that we already know, but sometimes just having it written down helps. It says content planning, plan and schedule content for the week ahead, and it goes on and on. I won't read everything. Um, it talks about analytics review, reviewing performance metrics and analytics for the week. It talks about community management, responding to comments and messages from followers and engaging with users, uh, competitor analysis, keeping track of the competition and monitoring their social media activity, um, trend tracking, content creation, um, paid social media campaigns, uh, reviewing brand mentions, strategy planning. Um, I mean, it just, it kind of goes on and on. So those were just, you know, a handful of the things. But it's an interesting mix of high level uh, forward thinking things and then just normal day-to-day -day activities. Yeah. And I mean, you could, at one point, I even just asked it out of curiosity. I told it, I asked it to create a nine to five weekly schedule for a social media content creator at a public library. And it generated a, a schedule and it sort of broke it all down. And it was like, you know, on Monday from nine to 10, you're going to check your emails and messages and, um, you know, from 10 to 12, you're going to do this. And I mean, even if you just need help planning your day, um, you know, where you're not asking it to, you know, like find information for you, but it's just sort of helping you as a scheduling tool. I think that's helpful as well. I mean, you can ask it to, if you're going on a trip, you can ask it to plan an itinerary um, and it pulls things from all over the internet to sort of source and schedule the best, you know, use of your time for an itinerary for the one day you might be in a city. So oh. there's, for things like that, I, I think it's very interesting and useful and I'm, I'm kind of digging it lately. That's interesting. And then uh, someone else put in the chat uh, that ChatGPT excels at walking you through a new skill, which is, again, nothing that I would have ever thought about. Um, for instance, uh, this person wanted to know how to create floral typography. Uh, it led them through an easy to follow tutorial and they were able to create something that they liked, which is great. Never would have thought about something like that. Has anybody else used it or what are some concerns? What are some thoughts? What are some questions? Maybe we should ask ChatGPT what we should know about it. I'm trying to think of what I'm even kind of curious about it too. And I think one of the one of the big things for me is sort of that ethical standpoint of it. Is kind of where where exactly is that line? And and 
we'll certainly get some legal guidance, I would imagine, the next couple of years, because you know somebody's going to sue somebody over something, um, and that will sort of set a precedent with it. But I am, I'm I'm kind of curious as to how that's kind of encroaching now. Yeah, and, and kind of as Jessica says, I think that's what it's coming down to for the majority of us is that it is a springboard, but it's not a final product. It is something that's that's there to help give us a little bit of guidance, give us that starting point, give us that spark of inspiration that we kind of sometimes need um, to get things going. I haven't used it yet, but I absolutely could see using it for um, blog posts. So at the beginning of the year, I had written um, a really long post about 23 books to look forward to in 2023. And I had, you know, five or six different websites open of like, what were the upcoming books and trying to find the common titles among them to really be like, okay, here's a great list. Um, but yeah, I could absolutely see putting that into chat GPT and being like, you tell me what the best, you know, the next 23 are, and it would have probably saved me tons of time. Yeah. I'm just reading what Kelly put in the chat. Uh, It knows all. <laughs> sure does. Huh. Well, that's an interesting little snippet of that. Um, and, and that kind of leads me to, if anybody does have chats, or I'm sorry, uh, AI services, in addition to chat GPT um, that they're using, uh, if you have the links available, please drop them in the chat. I think it would be helpful for us to start maybe generating some sort of a uh, a list of these things, an ongoing list, um, either of the name of what the service is or uh, a direct link to the service itself, whether it's free or paid, um, just so that we can kind of start exploring these tools all together in one way or another. Thank you, Kelly. That'd be great if you could share that document. I'm just reading that list from um, <laughs> from ChatGPT. Uh, it made me think we probably all have, well, hopefully, some some tech staff that we could inspire to learn and then do a library program. I bet that would be highly attended if some of our staff would make some <laughs> want to know more about this program. I'm like going to make a note to talk to my tech tech staff. You think we can get uh, programming librarians to use ChatGPT to write concise and short uh, program descriptions? <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> dear, like I want to, I want to phrase every ChatGPT request with like, "Dear ChatGPT, can you please do this one thing?" Thanks. <laughs> I know it doesn't need to be as formal as that, but I do kind of feel like it should be. Yeah, for conference session descriptions is actually put in the chat. I think that would be it, it. I think this is kind of where it maybe would be helpful to make people's jobs just a little bit easier if they use these services for things that aren't necessarily going to infringe upon copyright or whatever. You know, if a, a hired programmer gives us a description and then we have to judge it, then that's a different thing. But if we're just trying to describe Microsoft 101 or this random Excel program that we're doing or something, um, Maybe this would actually, all joking aside, be helpful for folks. So that's kind of interesting. I think um, when I was using later.com, the artificial intelligence, I guess, at the time was super duper preliminary, but it was showing you the different um, hashtags that you could use on stuff. And I guess that's considered to be artificial intelligence. I don't know, maybe not. But um, it's it's interesting that the social media scheduling apps and the uh, what I would assume 
our e-newsletter services and stuff too are going to be introducing these first or are introducing these first. Does anybody have any questions about artificial intelligence? Specific questions or general questions? So I think then as the marketing forum moves forward with trying to schedule somebody for July, we'll, we'll try to do the, the catch-all sort of aspect of it where we're, we're getting a little bit of everything. Um, but it, it almost seems like this should be a, a multi-part thing or at least maybe throughout the year or so as this continues to advance um, sort of as an introductory type thing and then diving into the different bits and pieces of it because artificial intelligence as one giant umbrella is one thing, but then there's the artwork component of it, there's the writing component, there's the idea generation, um, there's all these different facets and I don't think that there's any way that we could cover everything um, respectfully in 45 minutes or so. So that's a tough thing to do, but maybe we can use chat GPT to generate a presentation on all of it. I don't know. It, it, it just seems so daunting and so almost endless, the possibilities of it, so. Well, I certainly don't wanna cut the, the meeting um, short by any means. I wanna make sure everybody has the chance to say whatever they want, share whatever they want and ask whatever they want. Um, but I think that if nobody else has anything to add, we can certainly end the session sooner. Does anybody have any final thoughts or anything quite like that? Tool of the month type intro would be amazing. Hmm. That's a really good way to think about that. I never would have thought about that. I attended another training regarding artificial intelligence and human agency, and it was really interesting. Okay, there's a really helpful uh, YouTube link in there too for that presentation. Thank you for sharing that. I like the tool of the month type intro. One library in Canada has started has started an artificial intelligence literacy classes in addition to literacy classes, to digital literacy classes. Wow. Okay, that's a big one to unpack right there. Um, do you have any other information about that, Ashley? It's okay if you don't. And thank you for dropping in that upcoming uh, ALA course too, Melissa. Perfect, okay, thank you, Ashley. All righty then. Unless anybody has anything else that they'd like to share, ask or uh, speculate about artificial intelligence, I think we'll go ahead and end the meeting right here. Okay, uh, thank you everybody. This has given us a lot of guidance on for the marketing forum to be able to, to move forward with this presentation. Um, one thing that I, I do wanna mention to everybody is that um, the forum is always looking for new members to join the board. So think about that if you have an opportunity. Um, it's a really fun group of people to help program, uh, plan programs like this uh, and look toward the new future or the new year of programming and everything quite like that as well. Um, additionally, we're going to be sending out a survey soon, I think within the next week or two, probably two weeks, I'm kind of asking about what people want to see moving forward from the forum, different topics about programs like this, uh, presentations, roundtables, formats, whatever the case may be. So please look for that too. We're going to send it to not only you all here in the presentation, but we're going to use um, 
everything from uh, it's going to go to the entire ILA mailing list, and then hopefully we'll be able to share it with Heartland and Rails as well and kind of reach some extra people too that way. And I just want to mention there'll also be a drawing with that survey uh, for those yes. that completed uh, for a $25 gift card. Yeah, yeah. Free money is always good. So take a survey, answer some questions, and then we get the chance to win some free money. Um, and thank you too for sharing from Orland Park that there's going to be a chat GPT program coming this summer. All righty then. I think that's it for today. Thank you again, everybody, for coming and sharing your thoughts and feelings. Uh, we will be in touch soon. Have a good rest of the day and a good weekend, too.